If you need to scrape businesses from Google Maps and don't want to get fired for using an illegal screen scraper, I'm going to show you how to legally use the new Google Maps API Places Search to scrape businesses using any free text query. This brand new API is literally called Text Search New, which is kind of strange. Usually it's like V2 or V3, but whatever. I'll put a link to this in the description so you can check it out. The biggest benefit they highlight is the ability to search by free text, including by location. You no longer need to provide coordinates. You can type in any type of business and any location in free text and the API will find businesses for you. This is their example here, spicy vegetarian food in Sydney, Australia. You can get as specific or broad as you want when it comes to business type, which will be useful as you are still restricted to only 60 results per overall search. The other big change is you need to specify what fields you want back from the businesses and the search results in the field mask parameter, which is extremely useful because now you can tell it to get back fields like phone number and website without having to do a secondary API call to get place details. You can also pass an asterisk to return all the fields, but I don't suggest doing that as there are a lot of unnecessary fields that cost a little bit more in API credits that you probably don't want. So you're charged based on the fields you request back from the API. So if you just want the IDs from the search results, it's actually free, but good luck doing anything useful with the place IDs. But hey, if you're creative, let me know in the comments below. But if you request back any of these useful fields, you'll be charged $32 per 1,000 requests from my understanding of this documentation. And you can get back up to 20 businesses per request. So that's 20,000 businesses for $32 worth of credits, and you get a free $200 of credits every month, so you can get 125,000 free businesses per month from this API. You'll only pay per month if you go over that limit, $32 per 20,000 businesses. This is of course subject to change and based on my own interpretation of their docs, which are a little bit vague, you don't really know how much you'll be billed until you use the API a little bit and check your billing, but so far I'm at a whopping 17 cents, so I think this is pretty accurate. But please do your own research, I'm not liable if you get overcharged from what I estimated here. So these basic fields at $32 per 1000 are gonna be things like the address, business status, the Google Maps URL, which is super helpful so you can visit the place on Google Maps and see all the details for yourself on your web browser. So this tier may be useful if you wanna mail people something or just do some overall market research on businesses, but you won't get back website or phone number or average rating or number of reviews unless you go to the next tier, the advanced fields. These cost $3 more per thousand at 35 USD. I'm pretty sure it's in place of, not in addition. Again, the docs are kind of vague. And at this price, you get back the phone number as well as the rating of the place out of five stars, the number of reviews, and the website URL, which can be helpful if you're trying to look for websites or if you're trying to get contact information from a website URL. This last tier here, preferred, I don't think it's gonna be useful for most people looking for B2B data. It's things like, do they allow dogs, serve beer, or delivery good for children? but if you want these fields, it costs $40 per 1,000. So I suggest leaving them out so you don't overpay for data you don't need. And the other required parameter is text query. So again, you can be extremely creative. If you want search results, you can do XYZ business in whatever city or town or zip code you want. The API will return results based on perceived relevance. So these will typically be popular businesses. However, you can override that with one of the optional parameters listed below, such as this one here called included type. So I suggest you ignore this because you're required to enter in a text query in addition to one of these categories here. And they're not very creative, like farm is the only type of business here, but they do have a lot of other ones. It's kind of weird, this category list. So unless you want to find a very specific type of business by free text in one of these categories, I would leave this alone. Another optional parameter is this location bias. So that's where you provide latitude and longitude coordinates of where you want the results to be. But I know a lot of you guys find that kind of complicated. So right now I'm just suggesting you type in the location name in free text, because I know that's a lot easier for most of the people who watch these videos. You can also define a bounding box rectangle. This will be good for doing a deep crawl. I may get into on a later video. All right, let's scrape some data with their example, spicy vegetarian food in Sydney. And using the link in the description, we can query this API with my no code Google Maps API scraper. It's free to try it out and you can play around with the API to see how it works. So look for this endpoint here called text search new under places. I paste in my query and the tool will inject the query into the HTTP request so I can see the exact request and body it's going to make to the API in case I want to use this in my own code. We'll then copy the fields they suggest we use to get the display name and the address. Then paste it in here under response fields. 
So now remember, this is where we pay based on what we request back. So I have some predefined strings you may find useful. The first one is the free tier, the second one is the basic fields, this one here are the advanced fields, and this last one are the preferred fields I don't think anyone wants. Based on what you paste in, it will populate the xgoog field mask header as shown in the preview tab. Now for Google Maps API key, just follow the instructions here to get your Google Maps API key from the Google Cloud. Once we enter in those three fields, we're ready to make an HTTP request and get data out of the Google API. You can see the HTTP request here on the preview tab if you wanna do this on your own or just debug how this thing works. There are a few extra fields I'm not going over, but I may touch on them in another video. Right now we're just gonna focus on using free text and the fields we get back. Then click execute to make the HTTP request on our platform. Here I got 20 rows back, and if I click on raw JSON, you can download the complete raw JSON from the API absolutely free if you're a developer and just tinkering around with this. However, if you're a non-coder, you can click download CSV and download a CSV file of this data up to 10 rows per day absolutely free on our freemium tier. When I browse the results, I see I got the address and the name of the restaurant back because those are the only two fields I requested in the field mask parameter. If I wanna get more fields back, I need to request them from the API and potentially pay more if they're in a higher tier. So the way I understand their API docs is that if you request any fields from a particular tier, you have to pay that tier's rate up to the highest one you get. So if we're already requesting basic fields, we may as well request all of them. So I'm gonna paste them in here to get all of the basic fields back as it should be the same price. And we get a lot more data back, the place ID, format address. Here the Google Maps URL is super useful so I can look this place up on the actual Google Maps and I can look up a few more fields like if it's verified or not, unclaimed, etc., and a bunch of other things they don't show on the Google Maps API, unfortunately. They also now return a primary type. So here you can see most of these are vegan restaurants followed by Indian restaurants, general restaurants, etc latitude and longitude we get back, and a bunch of other fields such as the restaurant name. But we don't get back contact details like phone number or website just yet. To get those, we have to ask the API for these advanced fields. I'm gonna copy this string here, which is gonna include phone number and website, as well as user ratings and number of reviews, paste that in here to change my request to the API and execute. Now I get even more fields back, such as the international phone number, local phone number, the average rating out of five stars, Google Maps URL we saw before, and the website URL in case we wanna to try to get the email out of it or see if they have a website that needs improvement. Other things like price level, total number of reviews, and opening hours in structured format down here. So these are just 20 results, but we can get up to 60 results for any free text search. Just scroll up and click on this import button here next to this workflow. Now you can enter your free text query, but I can enter multiple ones, one per line. So I can do spicy vegetarian, then I can change this to Indian food, and I can keep getting creative. I can enter in more specific locations and restaurants, and it will bulk scrape all of these and do pagination for each free text search. Getting back up to 60 results per free text query I make to their API, automatically handling pagination for me. And here I'm gonna pick the advanced field, so make sure I enter that value in here, otherwise it will just get some basic fields back. So here I'm gonna get back website URL and phone number and all the other advanced fields. Leave pagination alone, it'll automatically paginate here, but you can fiddle with the settings if you really want. While the workflow is running, I suggest keeping an eye on your Google Cloud usage. You can see how many requests you're making per minute, et cetera, and set some quotas if you don't wanna go over that, as this will use your Google Maps API key to query the API on your behalf, and you're responsible for any excess charges you may incur over the $200 per month of free credits you receive from the Google Maps platform. All right, so this took 22 seconds, and I got 108 results. Good luck doing that with an illegal screen scraper. And I can click this blue link here to download the CSV file. I'll see all the fields I saw earlier, but with column A that shows me the input query I used so I can see what businesses match up with the input query. Also column C shows me the place ID. I suggest deduplicating that as you'll likely get duplicates if your queries are similar. And here I can see the same fields we saw earlier. In addition to place ID, we got the phone number, address, average user rating, URL to the business on the official Google Maps website, website URL, it looks like we get pretty good coverage in these search results, primary business type in case you want to segment or filter, as well as latitude, longitude, and a whole host of other fields I'll let you explore on your own. So hope you guys found this useful. Let me know in the comments if there are other features of this new Places API you'd like me to cover in a future video. And be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And why not check out this next video here on how to scrape Google Maps reviews.